सो हाय एवरीवन आई एम ए सी से दिशा चौहान आई हैव यू नो बीन एन ए सी से ट्यूटर नाउ फॉर फ्यू इयर्स एंड बिफोर दिस आई वाज ऑफ कोर्स वर्किंग विद फ्यू ऑफ द बिग फोर्स आई हैव वर्क्ड इन कॉर्पोरेट्स एंड यू नो नाउ आई हेल्प ए सी सी स्टूडेंट्स राउंड दी वर्ल्ड इन क्लियरिंग देर एग्जाम्स All right, Amit says I have already registered in ACCA and already given two papers, but unable to qualify in knowledge level. Registered and already give two papers, but so you have given current now. I am doing M Com. All right. So which two exams you have given uh, of knowledge level itself? Uh, is it? If you are doing M Com and if you did B Com before this, so. You started after B Com, Amit. So you could put it in the chat box, Amit. Uh, all right. So I'll start off like I was saying. Uh, I have been teaching A C C uh subjects. It's F A B T law. All these subjects I have been teaching for past few years now. so coming to fa financial accounting now this is of course your knowledge level subject so there are three subjects at your knowledge level and once you clear that you can then of course move on to the next level which will be your skill level and of course the last level is your professional level now financial accounting as an exam uh if you have already you know studied uh in your 11th and 12th if you had taken commerce then for you it will be quite simple because you would have covered at least you know most of the concepts that we have studied in our 11th and 12th accounting right we when we were in 11th and 12th uh, we already had covered uh, topics like you know double entry debit credit we knew all of that we know how to make a journal entry what is a trial balance you know balance sheet so all of those concepts are again you going to be seeing popping up in uh, financial accounting exam uh, so all of that is going to be here apart from that few other concepts which you probably did not cover in your 11th and 12th but mostly the base concept is your 11th and 12th accounting only so it's not very difficult if you have studied uh, in your 11th and 12th accounting already done that then for you you will see revis revising most of the things if you are currently pursuing or you are in 11th or let's say in 12th then it is going to be helpful for you because you will be studying here also and same concepts you can apply in your exam and in case you are from science background you have never studied that's also all right because in this level at financial accounting exam uh, you know we are teaching of course the basics as well but of course as a st accounting students one would have a slightly better advantage all right then let's talk about fa you know the financial accounting exam what it actually aims so this exam basically aims to develop your knowledge your understanding for all those underlying concepts that we have all those principles that are there or all the regulations that are there which are relating to your financial accounting so you will need to uh, demonstrate a technical proficiency basically how to use your double entry techniques right we have would have studied in 11th and 12th our you know golden rules of accounting we know what is debit credit and in any any case even if you have not studied that in financial accounting course when we used study through fintra you know all of these basics of double entries are being taught so you don't have to worry on that and if you have already studied you will be just revising that again then of course here in financial accounting you'll see the preparation of your basic financial statements for entities and even financial statements for groups so this is something that maybe you would have not studied so much in detail in past and this is something that you will be studying here but again not too much in detail uh, because whatever you're studying actually in your fa exam at this level you know that knowledge is going to be build up and once you progress in your acc qualification let's say you'll reach your skill level so there is an fr paper known as financial reporting so all these skills all this knowledge that you are you know gaining here will be used there and then again in your professional level when you are giving your strategic business reporting because 
at that level of course you will be teach, uh, learning a lot more about many ifrs and a lot more detail you will go through in these preparation of financial statements and the difficulty level will of course increase a little bit when you compare it to your knowledge level at this level it's fairly simpler because you know the basics are just being covered and like i said whatever you're studying here you know the knowledge at this level uh, you know you are going to be using all that not only whenever you start working at your workplace of course if you're working in accounting field you need to know all of these these are basic concepts that we need to know even if you're not in working in accounting field i feel as a business person you need to know these concepts and again in life when you reach to that point where you're giving your fr paper or svr paper these concepts this knowledge that you're gaining here will be very useful so it's important that you study not just with the aim that okay i'll study i'll clear the exam and forget about it this is something that you will remember for the rest of your life essentially right all right now let's jump on to the syllabus area of this particular subject which is your financial accounting and let's you know go through each of these uh, eight syllabus areas in detail so the first one is of course your context and purpose of financial reporting so what does like what do you study here of course you are going to be studying what is the purpose of financial uh, statements as such for your external reporting why do you really make financial statement what is the scope of it you know then we'll see the stakeholder needs what are the some regulatory requirements that are there the framework that is there you know what is some duties and responsibilities of those people of those people who are basically charged with governance what are their responsibilities as such towards this financial reporting then your uh, second syllabus area which is your qualitative characteristics of financial information this is a fairly short one you will just you know briefly study about the qualitative characteristics that are there of this information nothing much in this then your use of double entry and accounting system now your, your basics of accounting will start from here right right from your double entry bookkeeping principles which if you have not studied in back in your 11th and 12th you know the basic debit credit principles the uh, rules of you know double bookkeeping that we have you know assets like we say we uh, show as a debit balance liabilities or credit you know the all the basics are be, will be covered here and of course you will be studying about that okay what are the various books of prime entry how is a journal uh, you know really made uh, what are the different ledger accounts that are there all right uh, if anyone has to say anything you can unmute yourself otherwise i'll request you to keep yourself on mute uh, because you know there's a background noise coming in thank you all right then uh, your syllabus area d consists of recording of those transactions that happen or any event that happen right with regards to your sales purchases cash how do you record that what is a cash book inventory what are your tangible non current assets how do you treat them what is exactly a depreciation how do we calculate that what are the methods to calculate depreciation all of this again in 11th and 12th accounts you would have studied depreciation and all of that so it's the same thing that you will be studying and if you're not studied uh, in 11th 12th accounts let's say you're from science background still there is nothing to worry about because it is at a very simple level then of course your intangible non current assets you learn what is prepayments accruals all of that right uh, of course debtors creditors all of those basic things you will cover then syllabus area e is preparing of a trial balance here of course you will see what is exactly the trial balance why do we need a trial balance how do you correct any errors what is a bank reconciliation what is the use of a suspense account all of these things something that you would have probably covered also in your past but again something that you will be taught again then preparing of your financial statements now your very basic financial statements that we have balance sheet which we commonly say but they are you know termed as your statements of financial position and the pnl as we say or the statements of profit or loss and other comprehensive income then you learn what is your disclosure notes and you know what is the statement of cash flow incomplete records all of this is covered under this syllabus area then you come to your preparing of simple consolidated financial statements so in this you are till now maybe you have just 
you know you know how to prepare a financial statement for a particular company but when that company has let's say a subsidiary so you learn what is a subsidiary what is associate how do you treat them how do you consolidate them in your own financial statement so all of that is something covered in this syllabus area and of course then we have the last syllabus area which is h interpretation of financial statement so in this you are of course be studying lots of ratios you know current asset uh, current liabilities all of that uh, you know all the ratios that you used to study quick ratio asset test ratio or your uh, net profit ratio gross profit ratio all of those ratios and some other debt ratios so these ratios you know eps earning per share ratio so all of these ratios are something covered in this session and Again, these ratios that you're studying at this level, this is definitely something that you will see in the future in other uh, subjects also of ACCA. You know, this is something that you'll see in FR, you will see in SBR. So the ratios is something that you will almost see in many other subjects also, even the uh, consolidation part. So here you will see you know ratios how do you analyze your financial statements and exactly what is the purpose of or importance of doing this analysis of your financial statement so these are the syllabus areas of you know your financial accounting and these are the things that are there in that now let's talk about the exam structure right so your fa exam is a two hour exam and it is divided into two sections you have your section a wherein you will have objective questions which are also called as your mcqs where you will get 35 questions which will be worth two marks each so the total of this section is 70 marks so your majority of your paper you know the majority is coming from here 70 marks and you might already know that the passing is of course 50 marks out of 100 now the remaining part which is your 30 marks is coming from your section b wherein you will just get two questions and both of these questions are worth 15 marks each. So in this MTQ question, multitask question, you will get certain tasks, right? You will get, you will get like a scenario or a small case study scenario types. And in that you will get few tasks. It could have also an MCQ. It could have few fill in the blank sort of a things. You know, you will have to calculate uh, some things. Maybe you have to fill in your cash flow statements, uh, one part of a cash flow statement or maybe some part of your balance sheet. So something on those lines. And of course, if you are at Fintram Global, you know, all of this is all the questions of various types are practiced in our question marathon, wherein we have divided the question marathon in section A and section B, where in section A, we solve the MCQ sort of questions. In section B, we solve the MTQ questions, all your past exam questions, concept-based questions, everything is covered so that you are well prepared. Now, let me share with you certain tips for answering MCQs. And this is, of course, very important whenever you are giving your exam or even when you are practicing. First is read the question thoroughly i see so many times students are in a rush they think that you know i have to ask i have to do everything so quickly so they'll read the question also very quickly and what happens is if you read it very quickly you might miss out on some important things that are there in the question and you might misread also sometimes and because of that you might let's say say answer a but the answer was actually c so it's important that you read the question thoroughly rather than reading it very quickly and then not able to understand and then putting in another minute or so to read it again is of course better to once only just read it with your proper concentration so read the question thoroughly before answering don't rush yes time management is very important for this exam and for actually all acc exams but that doesn't mean that you're not thinking before answering and you're just answering whatever you think is the first choice. No, always read all the options. Even if let's say there are four options in an, uh, you know, question, there's one question, there are four options they have given you A, B, C, D. Even if you think answer is B, still go ahead and read the option C and D. You know, it's always uh, suggested that you read the entire question, all the options, and then you think before answering. You should not rush just think that, oh, this is the answer or I did this, this type of a question. This should be the answer. So it's important that you read it. Then at times it could happen that when you are reading a question and then you are looking at the options, you might find that none of the options match your answers, right? Maybe you have calculated something. It is not matching or maybe it's a theory question and you're not able to understand. You're thinking something else would be the answer and you check none of those matches. In that case, you should reread the question to ensure that you are able to understand what the 
question is all about and what they are asking you like what is the requirement you should eliminate any obvious wrong answers in some questions sometimes you know there will be answers which are obviously you know you'll feel like oh this is definitely wrong uh you know let's say they are talking about which one of the following is a current asset right and uh, there is let's say creditor in in that option so you definitely know that's not an asset so that is something that you will definitely eliminate right so in any question there could be some uh you know options which could will which will be like this definitely can't be the answer so firstly you should eliminate those then whatever is left maybe one two option three option then you should consider from them that okay most likely one which could be the uh answer which one seems to be the most likely option if you are still unsure then you make a note and you continue to the next question never waste too much time on a question if you are not able to you know after doing all these steps you're still not able to get it that's fine because in an exam it's very unlikely that you will be able to solve all the questions right even if you have studied a lot there will be only few students i would say who would probably know all the questions and all the answers right there are going to be questions which you will find easy there are going to be which you are going to find little tricky but you will be able to solve with comfort but there are going to be questions wherein you are going to face little difficulties and you might not be able to answer at that point so in that case if you're still unsure just make a note of it just see that okay this is the question i'll you know come back to it later and move on to the next question because like i said time management is very important in acc exam if you dwell upon and just sit with one question and just think about it or that oh i have to do this question I'll, and you just keep thinking about that one and you will waste a lot of time and you might not be able to complete your entire exam and hence your chances of clearing that would then reduce drastically revisit all your unanswered questions and then target those tough ones with fresh set of eyes once you would have completed the majority of your exam you know you are also going to be little more calm and you will be more confident also so in that case when you know you have completed the majority then you come back to those questions which are unanswered revisit them and then you target them with a fresh set of eyes right then you see what okay the question asked what could be the answer what are the some options which i can definitely eliminate and finally answer all questions even if you're unsure of the answer something that we always always tell the students you know there are many students who feel that oh um I don't know the answer of this question i have tried let me just leave it why to leave it there is no negative marking in any of the acc exams so never leave out any question right and especially at knowledge level when there are just mcqs or mtqs you know definitely never leave out any question you know if you are unsure if you tried everything you tried all the steps and you still don't know the answer it's fine at least click on any option it might be right it could be wrong which is fine because there's no negative marking but it could be right also you could get those two marks or whatever it is so that's why it's important that you answer all the questions you know even if in the end uh, let's say you've completed most of your exam but you see let's say only 10 minutes are left and you see many questions are left so you do as much as you can and in by the end you realize that okay you know there are five six questions that you might not be able to read them because hardly let's say one or two minutes are left so in that case quickly glance glance through it and just select any answer or option and submit it because it is you know better that you at least attempt it than just leaving it unattempted because it might be correct right whatever you pick whatever option you pick it could be the right answer so that's why always suggesting that answer all your questions even if you do not know the answer that's fine there is no negative marking so let's take a chance and it is important that you answer all of those questions let's now move on to talking to a more important uh you know area which is what should be your approach to preparation how should you really you know be preparing what should you be exactly doing uh someone has unmuted and there's a little background noise uh if you have anything to say you can say otherwise uh please keep yourself on mute guys if you don't have anything to say there's a background noise thank you all right so your approach to preparation now these are the eight steps which i always suggest to my students that if you follow these steps 
then you know your chances of clearing the exams will be definitely higher number one step one is always creating a study plan yes you know we think that now we have become adults and we don't need to create any timetable study plan we'll just do it however we want to it's always good to create a study plan no matter how big you have become whatever is your age in school we used to have timetables we had study plans and you know somewhat it used to help us in planning better so in that situation also you should create your own study plan and uh, you know there's no harm in that you can do it as per your needs and choices so number th one thing that you need to do since this is like a you know on demand exam there's no date given to you by acca so you this exam is available to you 365 days in a year you can pick on any day that okay this is the day i'll give the exam so once you plan that okay i'll be let's say giving the exam in june or you decide okay i'll be giving the exam in july you fix a date now this date could move around closer to the exam let's say one month before you might have to change the date for xyz reason or you may not have to change but for now decide on a date because until and unless you don't decide you are not going to be preparing with that, uh, you know, focus because you will be thinking, oh, I can give this exam any day. So, you know, I'll just do it how much ever I can. So decide on a date and then work backwards. So if you decide, for example, let's say 15th June, I'm giving this exam or 20th June, I'm giving this exam. Then you decide backwards that, okay, how I'm going to prepare. You make a four week study plan or a six week study plan or an eight week study plan, depending, of course, on your other commitments. You could be in your school. So you might have your school exams or other work or you could be in college you know, so you have to see your other commitments also. And al always since knowledge level exams are on demand exam, it's always suggested that you pick a time when you are, you know, you don't have any other commitments. So don't club it with your college exams or school exams. Pick a time when you don't have any other uh, commitments or, you know, exams as such. So pick a time. Okay, this is the time I'm going to give this exam. And then you make a study plan. You work backwards. You decide, okay, these many sessions are there. You decide for yourself. Right, you know how busy you are in a day. Maybe you are working or maybe you're going to college. Maybe you can only dedicate one hour a day or half an hour a day or maybe you can dedicate three hours a day. So you have to decide that, okay, on weekdays, week, weekdays this much I can dedicate. On weekends, maybe you have more time on Saturday, Sunday. So you decide, okay, definitely no matter what, I will study for five hours or I will study for six hours. Whatever it is, you have to plan it as per you, as per your other commitments, because you know the best, right? We are not, not in school anymore that, uh, you know, someone is going to be on our head, our parents who are going to be constantly telling us that, okay, study, study, your exam is coming. When you are studying for something like this, like an ACC is a professional qualification, right? You need to motivate yourself and you need to have that in back of your mind that, okay, an exam is there, I have to study. Nobody else can come to you and say that you have to study. You have to yourself self-push because appearing for something like this you know a professional qualification if you don't have the drive then there's no point in doing that so you have to push yourself you have to decide that no i can definitely take out one hour to study so make sure in that one hour you are then studying and you are not wasting time or you know thinking about something else and whenever you study Please keep your phones aside. What happens? We study 10-15 minutes. We get a notification. We'll sit on something, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, and we'll just waste some time. But whenever you decided that, okay, I'll study for this time, please study for that time. After that, you can do whatever you want to, right? You can, if you're studying for long hours, if you decide in a day, I'll study six hours, you make plans. Okay, after one hour, I'll take 10 minutes break i'll do this okay after two hours i'll take a 30 minutes break i'll watch some tv so whatever it is whatever suits you you do that and again i say uh, some people like to get up early in the morning and study you could do that some people study late at night if you prefer that you could do that all right uh one second my screen is still visible to you everyone right yes ma'am okay thank you yeah, so like I was saying, whatever it is, you decide as per yourself that, you know, this many hours I can dedicate, this much break I will take. Do take breaks. No one is saying don't take breaks, just study straight hour, straight eight hours. No one is saying that. Even if you study like for two hours, three hours, 
definitely take a break in between and decide that okay this much time i will take a break this much time i will uh, study you know nowadays we have phones we have smart watches you can set a timer easily and say that okay i'm now studying so i'll just study no other distractions and once you are taking a break then just take a break don't focus on studying at that point so create a study plan as per your commitments as per your availability as per your other you know things that you have maybe you're working you're studying so whatever it is you create a study plan and follow that i see so many students they will uh, you know create a study plan and they'll follow for four five days and then they again go back to not following it and not following a timeline or a time period like they de decide i'll study two hours but they end up studying only half an hour or so so make a study plan and ensure you follow that you know after every week on the weekend see that okay as per my study plan by this week i had to finish let's say three chapters and i had to do this many questions did i actually do that if yes great if no then why why i could not do it maybe you got sick then that's fine all right the next week you'll do better but maybe you just didn't do because you were wasting time so in that case you have to then check on yourself because like i said ACC is something that you have to push yourself if you can't do that then it will be very difficult for you to clear because you know there are so many exams and this is just the starting this is just the knowledge level so step two should be that you need to complete your entire syllabus yes whichever exam you're giving whichever subject whichever level you have to complete the entire syllabus you cannot do cherry picking here that oh i don't like this part or i don't like this chapter so i'll leave that no we don't know what is going to come in the exam anything and everything could come if they have given us a syllabus they expect you to know that okay everything you are studying so do study the entire syllabus cover everything don't leave anything behind just by thinking that oh this might not come or this is not this doesn't seem so important so you complete your entire syllabus practice questions now this is not just applied for a practical paper like fa which is mix of both practical and theory but for any exam you know you need to practice questions even if it's a theory paper you still need to practice questions practicing questions is very very important and that's why the step four is if you're done with questions practice again and again you know um if let's say you practice 200 questions and you are done with those questions and you did questions from various other books you did everything and then now you feel that oh there are no questions left practice again those questions that you did right instead of doing i say that you know some people say that oh i'll study from this book i'll study from that book instead of doing that focus on one book you know make sure you do all the questions from that and practice those questions again and again because in that you will find many questions that you're not able to solve so you know solve it again and again and i always say practice it with your own hands what happens is that you look at a question then you'll immediately look at the solution and you'll say oh, okay i understood the solution uh and you'll move on to the next you should never do that you need to practice with your own hand if it's a sum make sure you're doing the calculation on your own right in fa you will have let's say lifo fifo method all of that if you're not practicing and on your own then you will you look at the solution you'll think oh i understood whatever is being taught but when you actually start to doing it you will commit you some mistake some silly mistake only that's why when but when you practice on your own you will you know the chances of you of doing that mistake will reduce because you will be practicing again and again so that's why it's very important that you practice questions by hand again and again you write it and you solve it and if you are getting a wrong answer then you see the solution and then again try to solve it on your own step five is watch your the revision set session at least two times so fintram of course provides you with the revision session also in which way we have you know accumulated all the uh sessions uh, we have created a revision session in which all the sessions important parts are then covered in this separate revision session so make sure you're watching this session at least two times you know once you have done everything you know all the sessions all the chapters basically and practice questions watch a revision session and then at least few days before your exam i always suggest that watch a revision session again so that you know you all the uh concepts are being revised and apart from the notes that you know are given to you or the new books that you follow it's always good to make your own little bit of notes whether you're just writing it in those books only or writing it separately in a notebook you know all those small things notes that you make this is something that you can really use when you are revising on your own so all these notes that you have other than your session notes your or any book that you follow 
create your own small notes right uh, write it down when you write something down that thing remains in your mind for a longer time so just don't read thing and just you know forget about it write things down and then read them again and again then you must watch the video question marathon also at least twice like i said filtram gives you the video question marathon of section a and section b make sure you're watching this you are not only watching but you're solving so in the video question marathon whatever questions are being done you should also try to solve it yourself don't just look at it and see that oh yeah i'm understanding all the questions solve it by your own with your own hands because only then not only your speed will improve which is again important in case because that will help you for your time management but chances of doing any silly mistake and all of that will reduce that's why definitely don't only just watch but solve the questions also step 7 now this is very important something that many times have been told to students but they still somehow fail to do it is do a mock exam giving a mock exam is important because once you give a mock exam and in those same conditions right whenever there's a mock exam whenever you decide okay today i want to give mock exam you reach out to us we'll send you the mock and that you decide okay now for 2 hours you lock the room and you will give the exam as if you're actually appearing for the exam don't look at the phone don't keep anything like that and just give the exam so that then you will be able to see that how well or badly you are doing in case of time maybe in 2 hours you were not able to complete the paper then you will need to work on those time management right that okay i need to maybe practice more so that's why giving a mock exam is important if you don't give a mock exam if you're just you know looking at the videos and just maybe you solve few questions here and there and you think i'll just attempt the exam and i'll clear it so let me break your bubble it might not be the case you know giving a mock exam is important students who give a mock exams their chances of clearing are always better than those students who don't because you have already gone through that condition those that pressure so you know it you know you know how, okay how to manage time how how fast i need to be how or how slow i need to get so all of this is something that you will experience and learn when you give a mock exam and that's why definitely always give a mock exam because that's very important there are many students who think oh what what's the need of giving mock exam i practice so much it is important because of the time conditions and giving just a mock exam like you if you're just solving questions without looking at the clock then also there's no point of giving a mock exam so whenever you give a mock exam make sure you are attempting as if you are actually giving a you know real exam so make sure you are only taking those 2 hours you set a timer or you set a alarm and then you give that mock exam and step it of course is that you attend your exam you book your exam in advance prepare for it and the day of your exam you just go and attend before your exam a uh, few things that you should be doing is of course taking care of your health because if you fall uh, you know sick due to any reason then you know the chances are that you might not be able to give your 100% during exam so at least few weeks before the exam you should make sure that you are sleeping on time eating right not eating out you know because you don't want to fall sick during that time right if you fall sick before or maybe after then it's still fine you will recover and you don't have any exam to give but during the exam time if you fall sick and you have let's say exam in 5 days or 10 days then it will really slow down your process and you know your preparation also you will might not be able to prepare the way you you would have any other time when you were not sick so that's why that period before that uh, you know exam period which is 2 weeks or so or 10 days make sure you are sleeping on time eating right exercising little bit 20 30 minute walk doing something so that you know during your exam uh, just before your exam you are fit and fine and you know in a good position physically and mentally to give your exam and like i said um, even if if you have uh, you know followed all these steps then chances are you should clear the exam but if due to some reason you don't still one should not get disheartened it's at the end of the day just an exam not the end of your life and you can of course appear again but if you do follow these steps especially you know covering the entire syllabus practicing questions and giving mock then you should be able to 
clear the exam and like i said whenever you are studying make sure you are focusing on that you know whether you study an hour a day or half an hour a day but when you are studying you should just focus on studying and not on your mobile phone or anything else once you're done with studying you can do whatever you want to but whenever you study whatever time slot you have given make sure you're doing that so that's why creating a study plan and following that is important you can decide that maybe mondays you are more free you could study four hours a day maybe tuesday you're not at all free so you decide okay i'll just study half an hour maybe sunday you're fully free so you'll say okay i'll study today six hours eight hours so whatever it is you know i'm not saying that this particular hour is uh something that you should do that will of course depend upon your other commitments other work that you might have but at least an hour a day try to do that and some days you could do more some days it could be less but uh, you know at least have a plan in place a plan in action in place and try to follow that that okay this many this much i have completed this much is remaining because if you are not tracking your progress then by the end of it it will be like um, let's say only 2 3 weeks are left to your exam and more than half your syllabus is left so that's why it's important that you keep a track of it you are planning accordingly keep ample amount of time don't just think that okay you'll finish everything in two weeks you really need to keep a little time uh, for your preparation for studying everything then for revising for solving questions for mock exams so you need to create you know you need to have enough time to do all of this and with this you of course have to do other things you might we might be studying or working or you have college projects going on so you need to balance everything out and that uh, you can really do when you have a good study plan in place which of course you only have to draft it because you know your you know day and your other commitments the best so it's of course the best that you only draft your study plan and you decide okay this much i will study and this much i will do all right so this was about the financial accounting exam and thank you for you know joining in if you have not yet uh, registered uh, for acca or for any particular subject classes that you want to take you can get Uh, get in touch with Fintram Global, who is the gold approved ACC learning partner. You can always call on this number or WhatsApp on this number and visit the Fintram website to know more. If there are any questions now uh, that anyone of you have with regards to this uh, orientation, you know you can either put it in the chat box, chat box, or ask. So I will just wait. Uh, if there are any questions, anyone has. anyone has any questions ma'am if we have to give exam in may how do we register for that so you uh, you would have your uh, my acc account right and from that i think you can go and register uh usually i think whatever date you want to select i think one week before that you have to at least register i think it's something like that so uh, you you know everything is done online you have to make the payment online and just register online and select a date and time zone and then you'll get a confirmation from acca what about a uh, what obu degree i don't get this i don't get uh, this question himma amit himanshu says thank you okay Are you talking about uh, Oxford Brookes uh, degree, Am Amit? Yeah, Oxford Brookes. So for that, uh, uh, for that, uh, you know, uh, I'm not too sure because I had not done the Oxford Brookes uh, university degree. But I think you can apply for it uh, once you I have registered as an ACC student. and uh, for more details you can of course contact fintram global or even the acca have their own um, you know an email address if you uh, acca contact acca something like that you can just google that and you can just email the acca people and they usually respond quite quickly only of course they follow the uk time zone so you can just email them asking that okay what are the requirements i'm not too sure about this oxford brooks university degree amit to be honest since i have not pursued this uh, you can either you know the number that i shared or visit the finram website and you know from that contact us you can contact them to ask this uh, the education counselors at finram global would be happy to help you with this 
or like i said you could even uh, get in touch with the acca people uh you know could send them an email and they also usually respond pretty quickly and they give all the details and requirements or you could uh, get in touch with fintram and they will you know the education counselor at uh, fintram would be happy to help you with this any other questions so i will again share the screen just to show you the number and the website that this is the number and this is the website you know in if you have to get in touch with fintram you can contact on this number or visit the website anyone else any other question that you have ma'am which paper do you suggest for giving at first f1 f2 f3 f4 so f4 is basically your law paper which is skill level so you first need to give the knowledge level honestly it doesn't really matter which uh, because acc has designed it in a way that you know it doesn't matter which subject that you give in a particular level that's why they give that choice to students see f1 is your business and technology then one is management accounting and one is financial accounting so either you could just give it in that order which is the order which the acc has given uh, but that's just like i said an order which they just state out for otherwise they have that's why even removed the f1 f2 now no subject is called f7 f8 f9 so they have they have removed this numbering and the subjects are now known only by the names for this reason itself that you know there is no particular order you at, at one particular level you can give in any order so it really depends if you are more good at theory maybe start off with business and technology if you like practical subjects a little more then you could do either ma or fa so it's really your choice it actually really doesn't matter so or you could just follow the approach or the you know standard which the acca says that okay you start with bt then maybe ma then fa so any anything is fine to be honest it really doesn't matter that much at skill levels or professional level it could matter a little bit but not so much at knowledge level you really can give in any order i hope that answers your question yash anything else anyone has any question anyone has any questions you can put it in the chat box or we will then end the meeting i don't want to take up your time unnecessarily if there are no questions so feel free to put it in the chat box or you could unmute yourself and ask anyone has any questions himanshi aniket kanika amit yash Oh ma'am thank you for the session you're welcome himanshi how many times we can view classes time limit so the recorded sessions that you have you know it would depend on how much time period you have bought it for i think there's a 3 months 6 months period so in that period you can watch it any number of times right till the time the expiry is not there once that happens that's a different case but till the time uh you know you have those number let's say you took the sessions today and it's a 3 months validity so in that 3 months you can watch any particular session any time and any number of times ma'am any book or any study material from which we will study so uh, you know at fintram for financial accounting i have created of course my own notes but these notes are sort of an amalgamation of you know of various books whether it's your kaplan or bpp so as such i always suggest you really don't need to follow any other book you just if you do the fintram notes that should be more than enough but i never discourage anyone from for doing more you could follow apart from this let's say kaplan and you know for questions at least because more or less the subject matter will be same but you could follow let's say kaplan or bpp any book because to be honest all of them have the same content more or less right only few things are going to be here and there and you know the wordings could be different but in general the context the content the questions all of that is similar so you know you know, just focus on one whether it's the finram notes or whether you follow kaplan or bpp just focus on one make sure you are studying through that properly solving questions 
So if you are with doing it with FinTram, you will get the notes and the sessions. So that's more than enough. You see those notes, you do the sessions, you solve those questions. You know, in question matter, we are doing so many questions. Apart from that, if you still have time and you have any other book, let's say Kaplan or BPP, then you could follow that for questions. Anything else? Okay, if no one has any questions, then I will end the session here. All the best. If you have already started, uh, you know, if you have, uh, let's say, taken the classes and everything and you are started with the preparation, then make sure you have a study plan and you're following that. If you are yet deciding on that I have to give the exam or when should I give, then you should plan it that, okay, I'll give in this particular month and then work backwards. So all the very best uh, for your whenever you will be giving your financial accounting exams. And, you know, in case uh, you have to yet register for the sessions as such, you know, you can contact the FinTram team or visit the website for any subject, you know, not just FA, but if you're taking, let's say, if you want to study MA or any subject, and since you might be at the knowledge level, so any subject of knowledge level. And then once you move to skill level, of course, skill professional everything is there at fintram's website all right so thank you so much everyone uh, for joining in this is disha johan signing off mm -hmm.